Hi, uh, my name is Tess. I'm an animator. Um, I specialize in handmade animation techniques, and I get a lot of questions about my multiplane animation stand, so I thought I'd just make a video uh, explaining how I made it, and for relatively cheap as well. So I made this stand a few years ago when I was about to start working on my last short film, which is called Ginevra and is made with paper cutouts. Um, and uh, I really wanted to expand my knowledge about lighting for that film because the lighting was really important for the atmosphere. So I knew I would have to build um, a bigger and wider stand. Uh, so this is basically a 25 euro uh, shelf from Formido, which is the Dutch equivalent of Home Depot. Um, and it's one of those shelves that they sell like uh, in a box flat and you have to put it together yourself. You can see a shelf uh, being used for its intended purpose in a different part of my studio. But for this one, I had glass cut to the size of the wooden shelves that came with the um, prefab bookcase. So pro tip number one, um, don't just get the glass cut based on the dimensions that are on the box of the bookcase, because often the wooden shelves, when you get them, they're actually slightly smaller. So first buy the bookcase, physically measure the wooden shelves, and then uh, base your glass measurements on that. Pro tip number two, ask the glass cutter very nicely if they can file down the edges of your glass so that you can handle it without cutting yourself. Uh, getting the glass cut was actually the most expensive uh, part of this process. I had to basically call around to every glass store in the Rotterdam area and beg them to sell me some uh, leftover glass and to cut it for me. Um, and in the end, I got four glass sheets for about 50 euro. Once I got the stand back to my house, uh, I first put it together just to make sure it would all work. Uh, then I dismantled it, laid out all the little struts and spray painted the inside of them black. Why? To avoid reflections. Um, basically, as soon as you're dealing with multiplane animation, your whole life is about avoiding reflections. Um, and you don't want the reflections of the gray metal from the struts to be seen in uh, your glass. So basically, everything on the inside should be black. But that's also why the stand is so wide. Uh, partly, it's, it's so that I can have a nice flat uh, surface on which to place all my cutouts as I'm animating under the camera but it's also so that the uh, reflection from the lights is simply out of the frame of the camera. So it's nice to have it that bit, that bit wider so that you will have reflections, but you're actually just not recording them. Speaking of reflections, um, I have heard some people mention non-reflective glass, um, and I don't have any experience with that, but at the same time, at this time when I was making this stand, I was more concerned um, uh, about making it like for the least amount of money possible. So I just went with regular glass. Um, but I did get four millimeter uh, wide glass. And if I were to do it again, I would probably get six millimeter gl uh, thick glass um, just because it gives it a bit uh, more stability. So I got the stand, spray painted it, uh, got the glass and put it all together. There are a few different designs of these prefab shelves. This one, you can see, um, I can only place my shelves here or here or here, etc. Um, some of the other designs, the holes are uh, more evenly distributed, so you can put the shelves uh, at more options. Um, so I can change the uh, location um, and uh, distance between my shelves, but I'm limited with this design. Um, so keep that in mind. You might find some prefab uh, designs that are a little bit better, uh, give you more options, uh, depending on what you have at your local store. Okay, next, uh, lights. Because my stand is so wide and sturdy, uh, I can use these little lightweight uh, IKEA clip lights. They're called Yansio LED clip lights, and uh, they have these kind of snake uh, necks, which are very sturdy and don't move after you position them, which is really great. Um, they also don't flicker, which is the most important thing uh, uh, in animation, and they're about 10 euros each. Um, I usually have eight on hand, four on each side. 
And IKEA, at least the one near us, uh, is always kind of running out of stock uh, of these uh, little lights. So my advice is, if you see them, buy like 10 of them at once. Um, because even though it's true that they don't flicker, which is great, they also don't last forever. So you will probably have to replace one every six months or a year, depending on how much you're using them. I very often also use backlighting as well as top lighting. Um, so for that, you can either uh, set up your little clip lights uh, on the side and bounce uh, the light off of just regular white paper. Or if you need a really strong light, you can use a light box like I very often do. Next, the camera. Here, uh, the camera is covered by this uh, piece of card that has a hole in the middle for the lens. Why? Again, to avoid reflections. I don't want the reflection of the camera itself to appear uh, on the glass, um, which <laughs> has happened. <laughs> um, so uh, I made this little card thing, uh, which I will now remove so you can actually see the camera a little bit better. Hopefully what you can see is the bracket that is uh, holding the camera. Um, it is bolted to uh, the underside of one of the wooden shelves that came with the uh, bookcase. This is a, a special bracket uh, that's originally designed for people who want to fasten an external flash onto their camera. Like it's a, it's made for photographers. Um, and this particular one is called a Falcon Eyes camera bracket, which was 12 euros. And it allows me to um, move the, the whole bracket back and forth a little bit um, after I purchase the correct uh, size bolts from my local hardware store. And I can also move the camera up and down uh, a little bit, which is very handy. So on my stand, the camera is actually bolted to the underside of one of the wooden shelves that came uh, with the bookcase. Nice and easy and very compact. For the real geeks out there, uh, my camera is a Nikon uh, D5600 um, with, of course, an old school manual lens. Okay, right now the stand is set up for some paint on glass animation, so I'm only really using two layers. One layer where I do the painting and one layer for a background. Um, though sometimes I'm also doing painting uh, on this layer. But for Ginevra, the cutout film, I was usually using all four of my big glass layers, sometimes even uh, a total of six because I have some smaller glass shelves that I would put like in between on little stilts um, for some of the really complicated shots with lots of, uh, lots of background elements. Um, and I would have lots of different uh, uh, lighting gels for the lights, different colored gels, or I would turn the lights around the other way and bounce the light off of just regular colored card, which was fixed to the, size, the sides of the stand. I'll try to post a link uh, in the video description to more photos of the stand in use for different projects. So that's it. Um, you know, there's many different ways of designing a multiplane animation stand, but this is one of them. Uh, and it also certainly won't uh, break the bank. Yeah? Yeah. Was that okay? That was okay. That was, okay. That was fine, right?